So given the importance of social media uh, in our discussions and in digital marketing in general, I thought it'd be remiss not to comment a little bit about the history of social media. So social media is more of a concept than is a particular application like the World Wide Web. It sits on top of the internet, most social media does, often using the web, though it could be, it could have social media happening purely within an app. And it has its own rich history, which at times intersects with the development of the internet and the World Wide Web. Um, if you look back to the earliest days of the web, and in fact, before the web existed, there was social media. Um, there was, something, there was a, originally a set of platforms known as bulletin board systems, right? And these were um, text-based systems, usually, a little bit of graphics every now and then as it went on, which, in which computers could call up other computers over the modem and transmit information um, to uh, prov provide users access to a central repository of content. So often what would happen is that somebody would have a dedicated phone line in their office, right? That they would have, that they could, people could call in, leave messages, pick up messages that they had sent there, right? This was one of the first forms of social media, if you think about it, because it allowed different individuals to communicate on these BBSs, these bulletin board systems where they could kind of, and we call that because you could like post a note, take a note, read a note, things like that. Along eventually, and most of these were kind of homegrown setups. There were people running them, you know, just purely for their own fun and uh, a lot of them didn't charge any money or if they did, they basically charged enough money just to keep the system alive. Eventually along came Prodigy, America Online, and CompuServe in the 80s. And these were cleaned up and eventually graphical forms of some of these earlier text-based systems. Uh, they not only had the ability to post messages, but you could also have things like um, chat rooms, right? So you can, because they had enough phone lines, you could, in live context, chat with other people going on. I think of these, you know, in many ways, these things, um, and I have a picture of Reddit's uh, all form here at the end, right? I think in many respects, these are very similar and were very similar to what Reddit is today, right? They were, people would put a post up and then people would comment on that post and things would go along from there. So, you know, it's kind of funny how some of the earliest forms are, are coming back in many respects. Of course, then we saw the development of social network sites. So classmates.com was founded in 1995 and was really the first website to emphasize social networking and connecting with your own, cla your own classmates. And this is actually, a picture uh, from, I think, 95 or 96 of the Classmates website. Uh, Friendster is developed in 2002 with LinkedIn and MySpace in 2003 and Facebook in 2004. And that's kind of really when we see the next level. Of, but the social networking sites really hadn't taken off uh, until the, the arrival of these tools, right? Uh, and here you see some of the earlier images of MySpace and Facebook and some of these abilities. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, Facebook eventually winds up doing this extraordinarily well. It winds up uh, kind of dominating the landscape in the social networking space for a long time. Uh, and though MySpace was actually doing quite a bit bigger for a long time, uh, but eventually lost out. And LinkedIn found its niche, obviously, in the business community. Um, so Facebook and, and Twitter eventually, which was founded in 2006, really take off. So why do they take off and why don't things like Friendster and some of these other spaces do as well? Well, personally, it's gotta be timing, right? But another argument I would make is that both of them share one key to success. They made open APIs that allowed their content to easily be integrated into web, other websites. So Twitter has this ability that you can just pull content from Twitter directly onto your website and Facebook as well. You can also like things on your own, on a website and it can be liked on Facebook, right? And so this allows kind of a really a way for Twitter and Facebook to closely integrate with the rest of the World Wide Web in interesting ways. I think it's important to take a side step to note that Google, which is amazing in so many of the products it creates and does, has consistently failed again and again to enter the, uh, the social networking space. Um, it started Orkut in 2004 uh, as its first venture into, um, into social networking, and this was a unique and interesting social networking kind of concept, uh, but that was killed in 2014. It was huge in Brazil for a long time and it had a huge Brazilian population uh, using it. Um, Google Friend Connect was their next step as a free social networking site, launched in 2008, retired in 2012. 
Some people, uh, one way that there was another product called Google Wave that some people thought of as kind of a social media, at least concept, because it allowed you to collaborate uh, by editing websites, um, kind of, well, not editing the website itself, but editing comments about websites, and you could share those comments with other people. Again, this was started by Google in 2009, but killed off in 2011. Google Buzz was uh, kind of meant to replace uh, and Google Friend Connect, was a social networking microblogging tool incorporated in Gmail, started in 2010, killed in 2011. Finally, along comes Google Plus. Google Plus did really well initially. Many people thought Google's finally got it. They figured out how to kind of get social networking to work. Um, it, it, it did really well, it launched in 2011, but it has kind of slowed down recently. Um, Google's pared down on some of the functionality, and we'll talk about it in this class. Um, as a potential medium, but it's really kind of got a sub niche of which it's really interested in. So, what's now in the future? Well, in the very next, in, or not in the very next, but in one of the soon upcoming lectures, we're going to talk a lot about social media. So, I'm not going to spend too much time here. But mobile has changed everything, right? Now, everything that you want to do can be created with. Everyone can create these small apps. They have social components connecting people. And so we see things like Pinterest, Instagram, Tumblr, Flickr, LinkedIn, WeChat, Fiverr, WhatsApp, Chat, Snapchat, Yo, Kick, Yik Yak, all these different things. Video and streaming has obviously become huge. You have YouTube, Facebook Live, Periscope, Vine, Imager. And I, I think it'd be, um, it'd be silly not to think about that the future, especially with the growth that we've seen in virtual reality, the growth in augmented reality, that social media and those two um, areas are almost destined to come together at some point. Hasn't really taken off too much yet, but it, it seems like it's a natural kind of uh, conclusion of what's going on there, or at least intermediate state of what's going on there. So that's a quick link into the history of social. Hopefully this kind of gives you some idea of where things have come from and where they're going. Uh, and next week we'll start talking about digital marketing strategy and how to design your own strategy.